the impact right here is significant, so significant that I can't can't keep this location. I can't uh, continue to develop this homestead knowing what's happening here. So the land use specifically here on my property is going to change dramatically. And it's just it's not suitable for my long-term vision of self-reliance and my families in particular with all that's going on in the world right now. So necessary changes. Change is ine inevitable. And here we are. I'm in a, at a point now where uh, I had to make a very tough decision. And this is the result of that. What we're seeing right now. Me do right now. Well, been an interesting week, as you know, if you've been following along on either channel. I'm starting with me um, disassembling, uh, demolishing the longhouse and the backlash that came along with that. And then my decision to explain the reasoning behind that and um, finally coming to the conclusion, admitting that the real reason is that um, I was tearing that down is that we are, or I am moving moving locations to the remote property that I mentioned a couple of years ago. And a uh, couple of main reasons for that, as you know, if you've been watching these videos or watching me on my other social media channels like Facebook and Instagram, a uh, couple of things. One is the neighbor issue, which I'll get into a little bit more in this video. And then the other thing was that just the uh, development of the area, the, the uh, influx of people into the area and onto this dead end road that I was um, establishing myself on uh, that just it became too much for me to handle but again I've been sort of addressed or dealing with this, these issues for a couple of years maybe two and a half years um, slowly um, but surely getting worse and making the decision that I was just going to live with that but the last draw was this survey line that got um, um, put in or marked over the last uh, several weeks. So after a lot of digging, what we discovered is that the guy uh, with the property sort of kitty corner behind got permission from the Ministry of Natural Resources to develop the road allowance to get into his 100 acre parcel so that he could build a permanent full-time uh, residence there. Um, not something, like I said, I ever imagined was going to happen. It's a a remote property I back onto thousands and thousands of acres, thousands of, of uh, kilometers, square kilometers or miles of crown public land that's mostly fairly inaccessible. Um, what I didn't really pay that much attention to was the public road allowance that runs between my property and that crown land. Typically these things are not developed and in a municipality that's organized um, it would only be the municipality that would make that decision to improve that that road allowance in order to like let's say approve a development or something further along that road or just prepare it for future development in an unorganized township there's no township to get that permission from so the individual that owns the 100 acres went to the Ministry of Natural Resources got their permission to improve this roadway um, shockingly I mean I'd put the cabin at the back corner of the property abutting crown land knowing that nobody would ever develop that, that and feeling secure in my in my decision that um, was the perfect location um, not accounting of course for this road allowance that otherwise is fairly unusable or un inaccessible even because I have this creek that runs around almost the entire property which creates kind of a moat and it's really ma helped maintain my privacy over the years I never really had trespassers that I'm aware of on the property um, so anyway this guy can now build this uh, road with a bridge right over top of the the dam over the creek behind the cabin and it runs I haven't measured exactly but 60 70 maybe 80 meters behind the cabin and about the same behind the longhouse will be this I don't know how long it is but 1500 foot long driveway which because it's going on a public road allowance is actually can be used by the public if they wanted to walk down that road and then access that crown land. So can potentially bring a lot of nuisance. Going to be a lot of construction noise for sure. And then the um, construction of the person's house is going to bring a lot of construction vehicles along that driveway. And then, like I said, the public that can now use this roadway as well. So even though it goes just to a, a public 
or a private piece of property. They're not gonna, it's not gonna be a through road for the public, but they can certainly walk along it and then access the Crown land, all within sight of the cabin. Now, I understand that um, I'm spoiled to even be able to consider that being as that much of an inconvenience that I should move. Uh, I do appreciate that fact, but the fact is that I just um, really crave solitude and silence and privacy and my family in particular, um, who, depending whether they live with me or are just visiting, um, whether they're comfortable with the situation that's at hand. So that brings up the other issue, and that's the neighbors. Um, for the other people on the road or in the area that have been either moving into the area or have been there for a while and are concerned now after reading my or listening to my comments about the neighbor and having to get the police involved, um, I don't think for yourselves that it's uh, much of a uh, security or safety risk. These people were targeting me specifically because of my YouTube channel. They were harassing me to the point that uh, the police threatened them with criminal harassment if they did it again, did one of the things they were doing again. Um, one of the, and one of those things that they were doing was they were recording loud noises, like a bell chime that started two, two and a half years ago. Um, they would put that in a loudspeaker and blast it towards in my direction so that it would interfere with my filming, the audio on my filming. So I've had to edit that out. Now, now, fortunately, still lots of times it was still silent and those times I really appreciated uh, where I was and thought that I could live with the odd inconvenience of this interruption. Um, they started accelerating that recently, however. Now, ironically, in the spring of this year, well, my, I think my wife is still living at the cabin with me. Um, the police contacted me and accused me of stealing or were following up on an accusation of me stealing some uh, recording equipment from these crazy neighbors. And as it turns out, after getting more information from the two police that police officers officers who investigated, just watching Kelly on the hill here again, um, that uh, they had recording equipment or um, audio visual, I'm, I'm assuming a trail camera and some kind of audio recording equipment set up across from my driveway, recording my comings and goings and that of my family. And uh, when my daughter and my wife found that out, it was, that's it, we don't know what this person's doing with this footage or this audio. And it's, you know, very creepy and, and concerning. Um, and then in hindsight, looking back, a lot of times there would be a branch put on the driveway at, the, at my gate that I would have to get out of the vehicle or if I'm walking down there, move that thing. So presumably that was to make me linger there longer so that they capture that audio or video. Um, so who knows what they did with that footage or what they've been doing with that footage. Um, I'm assuming it stopped after somebody um, took the equipment, if that actually even happened. I don't know if that was just an accusation by these people trying to get me into trouble or if it was one of all of these new people that are walking up and down the road. Anyway, let that pass. And then later in the spring or early summer, um, they recorded my neighbor. Um, to, he's been digging a pond with his heavy equipment, but he's the guy who came in and excavated the pond for me and helped clear that spot. So he was there for maybe, what, three days, and then we were moving gravel for a day. So maybe three or four days total of, of heavy equipment down, and it is pretty obnoxious for, for sure. It drives me crazy just to listen to it. Anyway, they recorded that, and then over the following several weeks, they would put a speaker as close to my property as they could and blasting at a, this uh, sound back at me at a really, really high level. Like, so annoying, so badly, actually, that neighbors up the road were complaining to me as well about wondering what it was. And sure enough, um, when I did get the police involved, they show up at these people's houses and they had a, a van parked as close to the property, as close to me as they could, with the windows open and the sound blasting at me. Like just evil, like nonsense, really, just childish behavior. And uh, the, the police officer, the second one who came to investigate, said he didn't know exactly where the address was, but he was driving with his windows open and heard the sound way, like a mile or two down the road, and said he just followed the sound. So it was very clear um, that it was harassment and not just some random 
excuse that they gave that was pretty, pretty uh, pathetic, actually. Anyway, uh, one of the other things they've been doing over the last several years is trying to turn people against me online. And they would say whatever they needed to say to people to get them to, to turn against me. And then we started seeing comments from a couple of those people that were lewd comments about my daughter after she showed up on a few videos and, you know, threatening me physically. And then found out one of them actually moved up to the area based on these neighbors telling them it's a great place to live off grid. So that was it for my wife and, and, uh, and daughters. They were out and uh, it started making me a lot more cautious to put up more trail cameras uh, increase security substantially, like um, secure, uh, security cameras that actually send uh, Wi-Fi or uh, cell phone signal and stuff like that, and uh, more signage and things. So, anyway, that's the story behind that. Again, if you're from the area and you're concerned, I don't think these people are particularly scary themselves or harmful. But who knows who they've influenced? And but I think it's just targeting me directly. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Anyway, there's the full explanation. Now, as far as tearing things down, I did take the longhouse um, down because that is something I know for sure. It's just gonna, um, it's either gonna just be not utilized, it's gonna be wasted material, and I hate the idea of wasting material that's come from, from nature. I'm gonna make sure I utilize as much as I can responsibly. The cabin and the sauna and the forest kitchen um, all of those things are just going to stay until we decide what we're doing with the property in the future. I don't want to put that decision off too long because I don't want those buildings to start being start deteriorating because they're not being used. Like, for example, good to have a hot fire going inside the cabin um, as often as possible to keep it dried out. Anyway, we'll be making a decision as a family on what to do with the property over the long term. This transition I'm ex very excited about it now that I've and we as a family have made this decision um, I've put that behind me as I've done with other things in my past and I'm excited about moving forward I'm really excited about moving forward I've really always liked the land that um, um, I'm rebuilding on preferred it it's just that its remoteness and difficulty um, to access was a little bit intimidating for trying to build a permanent homestead with all the you know size of the buildings and stuff that uh, comes along with that and just accessing you know food production or food preservation and storage and stuff like that it's a little bit more challenging so um, I avoided it for that reason but I'm just we're at a stage now I'm at a stage in my life where I'm ready to make that move and um, willing to take that on and I'm excited about doing that still feel healthy and strong and and I hope I will um, for a long time, but I know at least for the next two or three years to, um, it's gonna, that it's going to take me to, to redevelop the uh, homestead. Uh, I need to stay strong and healthy. Uh, the workshop here, um, hard to grasp where things are, and unfortunately because of these security and privacy issues, I'm not going to be able to show an overall you know, map of the property or where it is or show uh, topography that might be you know, searchable on Google and stuff like that. So I can't show you where everything is exactly in relation to one another, but I can tell you this workshop probably in the long run is not going to stay right here, but because I now have this traveling um, issue to deal with, the, the uh, remoteness and the accessibility of with materials and stuff, this workshop is in a spot that I can access it still more difficult as you see I'm using the ATV to get the materials here um, but it's not as a, um, as difficult to access as where the cabin's going to be so essentially I can build stuff here and then move it into the final location as I get um, the place more established more comfortable and more um, available for actually sleeping and living in and and you know having food and all the resources I need to spend in long term there um, so anyway, we'll see what happens with this exact spot, but in the meantime, it's not at the cabin and it's, uh, it's in a better spot for developing or do, doing all the things, all, building all the things that I need to build in order to get the homestead, um, get, get it going faster. So I'll keep you updated on that as well. Anyway, I'm going to cut this video short, but I think what I'll do in the next video is explain why the two channels, what's so different about this channel than 
than the other channel uh, because people are confused by that and they find it a little bit inconvenient to jump back and forth. But there's really good reason for that, and I'll explain that soon. Anyway, if you want to uh, see that video you know, as soon as it's available, I'll put it in the bottom left-hand side of your screen so you can click there. And if you want to watch just my overall progress, um, the 2020 playlist, I'll put it up here and replace that with 2021 once we get to that point. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you back here at wherever I am next time. Take care.